Hey everyone, this is Ashley with CT Arena Digitals. I am going to do a couple of new tutorials today on how to use some of my new um, digitally created digital backdrops. Um, I'm going to do a couple of different ones. Um, one that's kind of backlit and then a different one um, that actually I have not released yet in my shop. Well, I haven't released any, either of them, but the white ones aren't going to be released for a little while still. Um, but I wanted to do a tutorial to have something to link to it once I do. Um, so this is one of my uh, digital backdrops from my Valentine series. Um, the like I do say it in the description list or the listing description, but these are digitally created, so the lines in some areas are not going to be um, perfect. These are. Um, for use on your website and for use on your social medias. Um, it's up to you if you want to include them in final client galleries, um, but they are definitely not for resale or to print as is. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use this image with this background. So I'm going to go over to this image. I am going to go ahead and go over to my selection tool. I'm going to go up to select subject and click that. And then I'm going to zoom in and just try to fine tune some of the areas that maybe didn't select. Um, it's okay to select some of the white background because I'm going to be editing this into a white background. You definitely want an image that's going to match the digital. You don't want to try and take a dark moody image and try to place it into um, a very white digital backdrop. It's probably possible with a lot of work in Photoshop, but it makes it a lot easier if you use an image that matches. Select this area of the lace. Okay. That looks pretty good. Sometimes the select subject tool gets it really well and other times it's just missing um, some areas on backlit images. It does that a lot. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and go up to edit and copy. Go over to my digital backdrop. Edit paste. And I'm going to resize her depending on. So these digital backdrops are pretty um, they're not really blurred at all anywhere. You want to add depth with blur um, and processing in Photoshop if that's something that you're wanting to add. So we could bring her forward and we would want to make her bigger. If we put her here, um, we could make her smaller and put her uh, more in the center of the image. Um, let's try both. So first I'm going to make her big. And I'm going to put her more at the forefront of the photo. Now, if I do this, we need to add blur in this background because if we were, if you're a portrait photographer, you should know this. If you're taking a picture with your camera, this backdrop, backdrop is not going to be in focus like this if you're focusing on your subject. So I'm going to go ahead. There's multiple ways to do this, but a quick way that I'm going to do it is I'm going to duplicate my background layer. And I am going to go up to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and I'm going to blur. I'm not going to do too much well, right there, about five, maybe. Yeah, we'll do about five. Press OK. And then go ahead and create a layer mask. Go over to your black brush, 100%. And I'm going to brush it off on the field that she is standing on because that is how it would be for um, if the photo was actually being taken. Okay. Now, as you can see, the lighting, this one, the lighting isn't perfect. Like if we were to move her back over here by the light back here, it would make a little bit more sense because she has light here, but for purposes of showing you, um, depth of field, these flowers would be more in focus. You'd want to erase the blur from that. Um, so that was, that's what you would do if you would want to place her closer to the image. You would also, I'm going to go ahead and merge these layers and duplicate it again. 
or actually, I'm not going to do that. If you want to add a new layer, change the blending mold, um, mode to multiply, and come over here and select your brush. Do about 10% opacity. Make it smaller. You're going to want to brush um, shadow on the floor where she's standing. So I'm going to go ahead and select a darker um, part of the floor. Opacity a little bit. I don't want to use too dark of a color because the shadow is not going to be very much here. And I just usually add this in little by little until it looks right. If you brush on part that you don't want, you create a layer mask, use a black brush, brush it off. Okay, I'm going to stop um, there for now because I want to place her in the middle of the image. The only thing I wanted to really show for this is how to place blur in the background if you're going to be adding her there. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start over paste her again and I want to put her back here in my image. This light over here looks like it's coming right here on her and then it's also backlit from the original image which would be the light coming from back here. Mm, proportion wise, let's see. I'd like to look at the things around the room to kind of see, like there's a little bench over here. If she sat down, that looks pretty good for size. Maybe a smidge bigger. Okay. So now I would want to add in um, layer multiply some shadow again underneath her. Shadow can be tricky sometimes to get to look right. It's the hardest part of digitals, in my opinion. And if you want to lower the opacity, like that'd be all the way. I do not want much shadow there. And I want to get rid of the shadow back here. We just want a little bit right here in front of her, where because the, there's no light coming from the front. Okay, and then you do want to go in and again check her, like down here, I, her dress needs to blend with the floor, so we need to add some blur. I just use the blur tool and go around the edges of her dress because they would not be sharp like that in the in an image if you took it with your camera. Just kind of go around, see how it's now blending into the backdrop. And then it starts to get sharper up here, which is good. That's how we want it. We want most of her upper body to be in focus. And this background is still going to be more blurred than her, which is what we want as well. There's still edges on her arm and stuff that could be perfected, but um, time-wise for the tutorial, I'm just going to leave it um, as is. Now, she's not bright enough for me. So, there's again, there's different ways you could do this. You could create... Um, a curves layer and you could press this button right here or you could press alt in between the layers to make it just on her and lift that up. You could also use like um, your dodge tool which I'm going to do because I don't necessarily want her dress that much brighter. I kind of just wanted her face. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and delete that. I'm going to go to my dodge tool 
for my mid-tones and I'm going to brush that on part of her. I sometimes use my dodge and burn action for this too. looks good. Okay, I am going to add a little bit of blur to the rest of the image because it's still a little bit too sharp for me. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate the layer, go up to blur, Gaussian blur. I don't want that much. That looks good. And then I'm going to make a layer mask, brush, 100%. And I'm going to brush it off these areas in here where she is standing. Make her dress a little bit brighter down there too. When you have an all white room like this, you're not going to have a lot of shadow where she's going to be standing. So blur is going to be most of what you're going to want to do there. Um, for tutorial purposes, I think that looks pretty good. I would keep this okay. Moving on. New person. I'm going to select subject. Quick selection tool. Select subject. See how it did on selecting her. It's pretty good. I'm going to go to copy, go to my backdrop, paste. Again, make sure that you're using a model that is going to match the digital. My wall was pretty bright back here from my windows on this side. There's a window back here, so that works. The window's not, or this, the light is not coming in harsh straight towards her. It's going this way, so that's okay. There's light coming from this window right onto her, so that matches. That's good. Okay, you're going to want to go in. Oops, see, there's stuff here that we miss, which we can't do anything about now. If you're copying and pasting, you would need to do that. We would need to come back over here and select that like that and then do it over again. Tutorial purposes, I'm not going to do that again. You can also <clears throat> extend, get a little crazy here your your crop tool select content aware up here and if you extend this backdrop oops i didn't mean to do that or maybe i did hold on we'll see i think i needed to move it still which we can still do Oh, unlock the layer to move it. Sorry, I'm just trying to get... Some people like to do it this way. I don't think it's as, is as easy, so I'm doing it just to show. Okay, you could also um, select subject. Duplicate layer, create a layer mask, control I to inverse, um, and then I'm going to copy my background. You could also just paste it in, or um, go to file, place embedded, and find it on your computer, but paste. Um, and then do it this way but when you do that you have to mess around so much with the background 
You have to move everything around. In my opinion, it takes so much longer. Um, so copying and pasting, just try to make sure that you have all the body selected. Because if you miss something in here, the only good thing about that, see it missed it again, is you can come back down here to your layer mask and use a white brush, or sorry, black brush, and you can brush it back on. But everything else is harder in my opinion, so. Okay, so we would need to add a little bit of shadow here behind her. Again, I like to create another layer, multiply, brush. I usually start at 10 to 20. I'm going to start at 20. Um, I'm going to use a gray and then just kind of add in a little shadow right here that would be behind her and under her dress. Lower the opacity on it. Like I said, you don't need a lot here. Okay. You want to blur these areas down here because they would not be in focus. I mean, they would, the way I shoot, um, would not be in focus. And then I'm going to extend this right here. I'm going to go up to filter, liquify. <clears throat> and I'm, lower that. I'm just going to kind of bring this out a little bit. And then I'm going to create another layer. I'm going to go over to my brush. Um, and it may be way easier um, for some of you. You guys may, way, may do it way different. Um, this is just how I blend and make everything kind of flow. You definitely need experience in Photoshop to work with these. Okay, I kind of took out my shadow, but I wanted to blend that dress a little bit better. Go back into that. See that kind of blend, blended her whole bottom of her dress right in with the floor, but you can still see the line, which is good. Other than going in and tweaking, I mean, the white back, like her skin tone and everything looks fine. Of course, this was an edited picture that I used. It was edited already, but um, you're any with using any digitals, you're going to want to try to shoot what you're, it's good to have in mind what digital you want to use when you're shooting your subject. Um, and that's pretty picture. I would use that on my Instagram or my Facebook or anything for advertising or put it on my website. Um, some digitals are a lot easier to use, some are harder. It just depends. Um, but that's all for now. You can leave um, any questions in the comments.